The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network presents Worldview Media Podcast, where Gordon and Joyce Runyon view popular media through the lens of the biblical five-point covenant model to help believers appreciate and apply principles of exciting narrative and engaging storytelling. Coming to you live from the quantum realm, where we are stuck. (laughs) Thank goodness. Another place we're stuck. It is the Worldview Media Podcast, the original. Do not settle for substitutes. (laughs) Are there substitutes? Do not settle for cheap counterfeits. I would be concerned about a cheap counterfeit of this one. Like that's (laughs) that's that's pretty low quality, right there. They should be. You should be getting money in addition to that. Ignore that girl. (laughs) Do not settle for people trying to glom on to the worldview media podcast popularity. Oh. Okay. Such as it is. <laughs> we are talking about the movie The Ant Man and The, the Wasp. Wasp. Are there two Ant-Man. V's? No, it's no. just Ant Man. Ant Man and The Wasp. Ant Man and Wasp. Ant Man and The Wasp. Ant Man and The Wasp. She has the. Because if there it was just Wasp, you, there, there might be several Wasps that you could be referring to, but this is The Wasp. She's singular. He's the second one. So. Right. However what? that works out. There was an ant man first. But there was also a wasp first. Alright, so Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is Worldview Media Podcast. I'm your host, Gordon Runyon. With me for the last time this summer. For the last time until probably Christmas break. We have the whole Worldview Media team here with us. Wow. We have this young fruit. This young fruit. Reagan. <laughs> All right. You and your fruit. Got to cut it out. <laughs> Hello, Reagan. Hey. <laughs> we have older fruit, Jordan. <laughs> well, that's not good. Yeah, take that fruit back to the market. <laughs> <laughs> we have overripe Carmen. Yeah, that's, that's probably fair. Just pull it out. Don't even take it back. Throw it away. And we have aged fruit brandy in my wife Joyce. What? what? <laughs> you never had fruit brandy? It's good stuff. That's a compliment. Well, we should yeah, probably sure. move on from this fruit discussion. And what are you? I am You're a fruit uh, loop of your own. <laughs> <laughs> Led by our resident fruit loop. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Y'all don't make me assert my manhood up in here. <laughs> all right, let us all throw our heads back at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough frivolity. <laughs> We're talking about a very serious cinematic achievement. Oh, sure. In the Ant Man and Wasp. Oh. And the Ant Man. The Wasp. The Ant Man and Wasp. <laughs> Are you doing that to be funny? Do what? <laughs> Are you doing that to be funny? No. Okay, because it wasn't. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Yes. It's our job to talk about this movie, talk about storytelling, what worked, what didn't, what you liked about the movie, what you didn't like. Anybody got anything overall comment wise? It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was funny. It was a yeah. nice break. Yeah, it was funny. From the horror. The heavy horror. Heavy. It was like, oh, okay, I can relax a little bit. Yeah. I so didn't feel nice. like the world was or ending you? or anything. I don't know. And you're like the world was going to end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mm-hmm. stakes were actually pretty small for a superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's really true. Well. I mean, he wasn't saving the world or even the city. He was saving or... his wife. I would like to think that mattered to somebody. But she's already mm-hmm. gone for so many years. So no, a, no big loss, really. It was a rescue <laughs> mission. Yeah, it was a rescue mission. But for like 
for one person it and not like very, an entire city or yeah. an entire country. It was yes. a very private uh, sort of conflict. Yeah, a really sort but, of very personal conflict. But she was lost in saving... Yeah, but even the not villain... Not just herself, I mean, but... Even the villain wasn't, like, a big, like, ah, I'm going to, you know, steal your machine take and over take the over the world or yeah. unleash, you know... Or sell them to the, the enemy. And stuff like that. Yeah. She wasn't into that. She was, you know... She her was reasons for doing it was personal, you know... It was a personal <clears throat> It was a much more s- s- smaller-scale movie. Right, so if... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what yeah. you did there. I didn't realize until I said it. That's why, <laughs> that's why I laughed really I stupid. saw the realization come over your face. It was like it was crowd. Like, too, bad this, too bad this is not being video recorded. But. Yeah. Oh, boy. But, yeah, that's kind of true. If the villain's whole plot had worked out perfectly, it may have been dangerous to one person. Yeah, Maybe. Maybe. It looked like, from what we saw, that it probably would have been not good for, for her, but... Yeah, but no guarantee that she would have suffered permanent damage, or... Well, I mean, I guess that was in there somewhere. She might have died. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. This is a wide sort of thing. But the villain could have gotten everything she wanted, and everybody walks away fine. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, at least sort of in the same place where they started the movie. The only place where that's where I was thinking that's not right is there was the other bad guy who was like an arms dealer but he's selling oh, yeah. technology uh-huh. the birch and, man and then secondarily Rich? if he sells stuff to the wrong people then it could be bad for everybody right. yeah, yeah, but I, he doesn't care about anything but the funds there was, but he wasn't even I would say like the main no there was never a threat. point that I was like oh no he's gonna he's gonna get away with it like I was never actually concerned about him he was just kind of like he was a nuisance he was a right. nuisance he wasn't much of a threat that's true yeah <clears throat> okay so it's been called fun and funny anybody else have any ideas or you know what? It's a light-hearted movie, really, for the most part, which is just a nice, fun summer movie where you don't really have to, you know, be on the edge of your seat or worried or like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Or I'm afraid. Or right. Right. you know, yeah. it was just a, it was a good movie. After the Infinity War thing, I think Carmen's right. It's good to have a movie that's a lot more light-hearted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they had some really funny parts. <coughs> in it. Well, really, even, really funny stuff. Even Ragnarok. Like, for yeah. as funny as Ragnarok is, <laughs> a lot of people died in that movie. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. a, a lot, lot of people <laughs> died in that movie. A there's a people. lot of, like, serious yeah. stuff that's happening in that movie, you know. There's, but it's still a good movie. It's, it's you know, you think of Ragnarok and it's funny, but then you're like, Wait. man. <laughs> it's actually pretty dark. Man. Yeah, some stuff really goes Everybody down. Everybody died, <laughs> you know. Um, I thought that... that the use of their shrinking tech was really fun. Mm-hmm. I think they did a good job of that in, oh. like, the first one, but then they, like, stepped it up again. Or they're just shrinking everything. They're just shrinking yeah. everything, you know? Right. Or, like, hey, we're going to make this real big now. Now that they have that down, they're like, we're going to do this, too, and we're going to do this. And Yeah. Well, from a storytelling standpoint, this is going to sound nitpicky because... It is. Well, it probably is. But if you're going to try to offer a scientific explanation for your hero's superpowers, you need to at least come up with something that can be used consistently. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like the shrinking and growing technology is consistent. Because my understanding is that when Ant-Man shrinks, it's because the space in between the atoms is going away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that he's... He's really small, but he's super dense. He's got all the same mass. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I think that's why he seems super strong when he's small, because he still has, like, grown man yeah, strength. Yeah, but now it's coming in this, like, tiny little bullet. Really tiny little fist. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, okay, that's fine. But then when he becomes super big, mm-hmm. wouldn't that have to be the same? That now you've got this 65-foot tall guy that has the exact same number of atoms as a normal guy and would have the same mass as the normal guy. He's not mm-hmm. he's not losing mass or gaining it as he shrinks. It's all about the space between the atoms and molecules, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> so it seems to me that it's, it's inconsistent because he grows and he obviously weighs a whole bunch and, mm-hmm. and he's obviously way stronger than a normal man and all that. So. <laughs> I think there's... 
there's something else probably going on with that because when he gets small and comes back, it doesn't like wear him out. But you see, in like yeah. when he gets big. So like, you're saying that some of his own personal energy may be being consumed. transferred yeah. into mass. Yeah, or because they oh, talk that makes about some sense. yeah, because they talk about you when know, he did that. You know, well, what's your limit? Days, you know, and oh, how yeah. far? And like, I slept for three days, and when he gets real yeah. big at the end of the movie, that he like he can't. He's not functioning properly and stuff, and he's like, I've, I've got to lie down. It just sort of faints, you know. So basically, his life energy is becoming increased mass. Yeah, and strength. Well, that there's there might be. All right, I just I just feel like they didn't ever really explain that very much. Yeah, it's I not, mean, your explanation is as good as any. I mean, there's no real science no. for doing that. <laughs> We're just <laughs> coming up with stuff here, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I really thought the scene where his shrinking gets stuck like halfway <laughs> and now Ant-Man is like the size of a preschooler. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought that whole scene was hilarious. It's really funny. Yeah. He's like running around with this ginormous hoodie on and stuff. <laughs> right. Little arms. I thought it was really funny when he stops and the teacher sees him. And they, it's just, you know, a couple seconds where they just kind of, nobody do moves or anything. And then he runs away all stupid because, you know, he's super small and he's got this big old Sloppy hoodie thing clothes. on. Yeah. And the yeah. teacher's just, you know, he's done. He's just. Like, no. whatever. Whatever. Stupid kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And my vote for the other funniest scene was the argument about whether or not it was true serum. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's good. I was really happy that all of them came back. All the side All the side crooks. people. Ant-Man's crew. Uh, crew. Ex-cons. Yeah. His uh-huh. ex-cons. Man, that, that supporting character, what's his name? Luis. Luis. Is that the one? Yeah. It's his real life name. What's Michael his real life name? Pena? Michael Pena. Mm. Wow. Man, he was, uh, he he was, was really good. good. Yeah, he was very was funny. funny. Yeah, he was real good in the first one, too. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that they continue to use him well in these movies. Yeah. He was very funny. Every time an Ant-Man come, movie comes out, there's always like a discussion online about how everybody just wants to see the next movie to be... Louise telling what happened <laughs> and that's it they just want that like, segment do mm-hmm. something with this the the last the latest one I saw that I thought would be really funny was because they have a scene where he like recaps the last Ant-Man movie oh. that they want him to do that with Infinity Wars oh no and then everybody has to like try and lip sync to match up to him and like with the attitude and stuff <laughs> just good. just because that would be hilarious and I'm, idea. You know, yeah. I'm down for it That'd I'd watch right. it yeah all right, any other comments, questions? Um, after the movie, I know we had just discussed the actress who plays... The ghost? No. The wasp? Yeah, the wasp. What's her name? <coughs> Evangeline Lily Hope Pym, or the original wasp? Oh. Yeah, Evangeline Lily. Yeah. So how she's just not very memorable. She's forgettable. Very, I didn't even know she I didn't was know in she the was last the first movie. One. <laughs> Her hair was different. Her hair was so different. Yeah. See, you change your hair and nobody knows who you are. I guess. <clears throat> well, and Paul Rudd is such a... Such a guy. He's a dynamo. Like, I mean, he's, he just, it's, he's got so much personality that he brings to... Yeah, he brings a lot Whatever he's character. playing, yeah. he's always very memorable as that person. Yeah. So, like, it... It must be hard yeah. <laughs> to like try between, and cross yeah. between Paul Rudd and Michael Pena. Like, what do you do? How do you? Yeah. How do you get in there? Yeah. And then uh, who's the other guy? Hank Pym. Uh huh. Michael, Michael Douglas. Douglas. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's so good too. Like, it's hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like Evangeline Lilly was. And then her of... mom's Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. yeah. So Come this girl's on. left behind. She's yeah. Small. And then you have Lawrence Fishburne in there. So you know. The trap. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's just well, that doesn't count. People. Lawrence Fishburne's in like everything. <laughs> he hasn't yeah. been up until now. But uh, look at us. We're we really moved on quite a bit because now we like look up that we know the actors' names and stuff. Those first <laughs> ones you listen to, we have no clue who anybody is. <laughs> there was somebody we're barely was, sure about there characters. Was a guy. There was a guy. I think his name was Bob. <laughs> <laughs> was it Bob? I don't know. No. I don't know. But he did a thing. No, it was another guy. Oh, okay. Well, some guy did a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All 
We'll see, we're struggling to improve. We're always striving. <laughs> struggling to improve. Always struggling hey, it's to hard. Improve. It's hard to improve. <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Ready. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw our heads back in <laughs> um, I was kind of disappointed with the ending. <laughs> but the very ending or the ending of the film? The ending of the film. The very, very ending I was disappointed with because personally it made me just, you know, like, ugh. But because it made me remember things that I didn't want to have to face. Come on, man. But uh, the <laughs> ending of the film, the ant Man storyline, I didn't especially appreciate because it kind of reminded me of, like, the Indiana Jones thing that... Oh, what is it, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something like that? That if Indiana Jones hadn't done anything, then it would have worked out. It would have worked anyway, you know. Oh, you felt like it was the same. Yeah, because no. the whole time when she's talking about like I have to take the energy from this lady and stuff like that, I have to do that right now and stuff. I'm like, you know, you could just wait until she comes out and. Oh. Yeah, then beat them all up. Yeah. Wait till she's here. Yeah, wait good. till she's here, and then maybe, you know, while you're both here, you can figure out, okay, she's got enough of this, we can do this, and it'll be safe, and both of you guys will be fine. You know, if you just, you know, be a little bit more well, patient. But I think that was her whole issue, is that she had always been told, we can figure this out, yeah. you just need to be patient. And meanwhile, she really is coming apart at the seams, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, but like, and then even, you know, why didn't this guy go and contact, like, I know Hank Pym is a jerk, but... If you think that this is Hank Pym sort of thing, that you know, if you really care well, about, well, but you this have girl, everybody being forced underground yeah, because yeah. of why Hank Pym didn't not go underground. Right to he be, just, well, he was certainly not as visible as he used to be. But how many years? How yeah. many years was Hank Pym just you know being a crotchety old man doing nothing? Well, but but he didn't know there was anything to do. Yeah, and because he the didn't, Lawrence Fishburne character, whoever his name was, he wasn't even Bill. Bill. Bill wasn't even <laughs> taking <Bob>. care of her <laughs> until after Shield went down, and so mm. that's not no. Because he meets her in the hospital no, when she's little. He met her in the hospital when she was little, but, she but was then so she field. she he knew at that point. Anyways, 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 y'all are gonna argue with me, but <laughs> beyond that, <laughs> you know, just the whole thing. I was kind of like, you know, she just wait. You know, and he says, you've got a couple more days. It's like, okay, girl, you got a couple more days to just chill for a little bit. You know, you found the guy. Even if this, you know, uh, if the mom hadn't been able to fix it, I'm sure Hank would have figured out something. Uh, but waiting is not easy. I know it's not. And that's, you know, I'm saying this. But just to watch it, I was like, you know what? She just needs to chill for a little bit. Everybody needs to chill. Sit down. You know, let... Well, and people kept telling her Scott, that, too. Yeah, but let Scott just kind of talk everybody down, chill out, bring Luis in, have some chip serum, get it out, and then it'll be fine. Well, do you, you know? know what else was funny? What? The ducks. <laughs> the duck? The duck ringtone? No. That, that was kind of funny, but not that funny. I was thinking whenever the mom talked through Hank, or no, oh. talked through... Ant Man. Yes. Paul Red. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's his actual name? What's his name? Ant Man. Scott. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Ant Man. Paul that Red. That was funny. Yeah. So he did really well with that. Didn't he? With, with his little facial expressions and yeah. his smiles. And <laughs> yeah. He's so funny. But that was that was probably my biggest issue is that if everybody could have just kind of been more. I think the big issue was that everybody was just kind of like, ah, I'm, I'm the right person and you need to listen to me. Well, but the real issue was that they were in a strict timeline to get the mom back. Mm -hmm. They had to do it within this time frame or if, who knows when or yeah. if it could happen again. So there yeah. was a time issue there. It wasn't for that other girl. And I know people who just get frustrated by being told, I'm sorry, you got to wait. No. Yeah. And that never helps you to say, oh, well, yeah, you're right. In that case, I guess I will. Yeah, but from, from this point of an outsider, I was just like, man, this is, really is going to be so, so simple. What? You don't? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if this is happening before, uh, and this is me being, if this is happening before Avengers Infinity Wars, uh, Infinity Wars happens after uh, Black Panther, which is uh, two years after 
the Civil War, right? No, Black Panther is... Black Panther, this right one. Away. Black Panther Infinity is like Wars. the week after yeah. Civil War. Infinity Wars is supposed to be two years after Black Panther. Yes. So then, Black Panther, and then uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. falls in Civil War, right? Or is it It's before that? No, before that. So there's, there's plenty of time in there that he could have gotten a hold of Hank Pym. You know, because there's at least two years. But they are more before they're, that. They're not friends. They're <laughs> enemies. They're frenemies. I'm just saying, if you really care, wouldn't you go? Like, He's probably well, looking at different avenues. He built there's her no that telling machine. where this ghost girl has gone after Shield fell. She could just be this, with this a dude rogue. with Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> She's been with him the whole She's time. She's been with Lawrence Fishburne. I don't know. I think I think there <clears> were <throat> there were some timeline things that I'm kind of like. Mm, yeah. Well, I'm kind of confused about some of the timeline, too. I feel like if if we're just knocking around the house one day and we see that Ant-Man and the Wasp are coming on, a, coming on TV, I wouldn't mind watching it again just to look for those funny scenes, the specific yeah. ones that are yeah. hilarious. Yeah. There are also some good ones with the police officer guy. He's oh, also the FBI a, guy? He's also Kurt, a youth no, pastor. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, you've got a real way with kids. Oh, thanks. I'm also a youth pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Jimmy Woo. That's and when he was, tries to learn the close-up magic because he was real impressed. <laughs> he's like, how'd you do that? So good. Yeah. All right, y'all. We should probably stop and get on to our next segment. After the break, we will talk about worldview stuff the reconstructionist radio podcast network brings to you a complete lineup of podcasts where you will hear practical and tactical theology our desire is not simply that you consume our shows but that you also live out your faith in every area of life we can talk all day long about these things but if we fail to put them into practice then we fail as ambassadors of jesus christ our king Subscribe now to your favorite Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network shows, or you can subscribe to the Reconstructionist Radio Master Feed, where all of the content we produce, including the audiobooks and audio articles, will pop up as soon as they are available. And don't forget to visit ReconstructionistRadio.com to volunteer as a narrator or to partner with this ministry financially. May the Holy Spirit stir you into action for Christ and His kingdom. And we're back, Worldview Media Podcast, the most frivolous, just for fun podcast on the Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network. I thought you had forgotten what it was on. <laughs> I remembered right at the last minute. Trust the Fruit Loop. <laughs> <laughs> Trust the Fruit Loop. Be the Fruit Loop. <laughs> we really do have a serious mission here right now. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to talk about worldview issues, thematic content, and. Ant-Man. And the Wasp. And the Wasp. Anybody have anything, or shall I break out mine right away? Well, I think we've got to hit on something a little bit. What? What? Let me just... Each other? Um, know how... Uh, I know we were kind of talking about, like, well, it's it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. It's just one person, mm-hmm. you know? But then you think about it, and it's like, what's the difference between one person versus... However, the whole population or whatever. The value? Mm -hmm. Value call? They fought as hard as they would have if they were trying to save the city. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how we're supposed to look at it and how we're supposed to see the value in people. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Well, and it really is one person at a time. Yeah. We know everyone's created in God's image, and so Mm -hmm. they are valuable. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, well played. Thank you. <laughs> Give yourself a high five. 
<laughs> she did. <laughs> For those of you not here, I gave myself a high five, so. Sorry you missed that. Um, it's just kind of like a clap, though. It's a self clap. You can recreate it at home. <laughs> just take a minute right now, give yourself a high five, you'll feel so much better. <laughs> um, mine kind of goes into the... Uh, the other thing I was talking about before about how, you know, they didn't communicate or talk to each other and stuff that, um, there were a lot of, to me, there were very, a lot of, like, very selfish motivations in this thing. And, like, when you look at them all, it all makes sense, you know, that, um, you know, Paul Red Scott wants to get back to his house and stuff. He wants to get off of house arrest. And the Pym family wants to get their wife back. The ghost wants to be healed. You know, this dude wants, you know, Lawrence Fishburne wants the ghost to be healed. The ex-cons want to, want to you know, want to be they want successful. They want to have a viable business They model. want to have a viable business and stuff like that. You know, all of these different things. Even the bad guy, you know, wants something. And they're all very, uh, you know, selfish about it. And, um, you know, the bad guy, of course, he's going to be more... You can't really expect much from him. But for the uh, the kind of the protagonist that um, I just saw a lot of, going back to your wrestling thing, a lot of people putting themselves over, Oh yeah. you know, that it wasn't so much about nobody was really serving. No. That everybody was just kind of like I need my need addressed right now. <laughs> right. You know, forget about you. Yeah, and You're it's not. Catch. It's not that like yes, okay, that's a valid thing that you want, but mine is more I'll important help you. right now. No, it's about me. Yeah, yeah, I can help you until my need is you know until it becomes an issue for me. That like when uh, Scott tells Lewis to come to their secret hideaway to look over some plans. Yeah. For for a business meeting the for next a day. Business meeting the next day. You know that that was like I was just like, how could you? How does that even make sense to you to do this if you have <laughs> the cops after you, if you have this crazy ghost girl after you, if you've got this, like, arms mafia, dealer guy, you know, you know that you're going to tell somebody, hey, come find our, let me give you the address. <laughs> well, that's his our, best friend. But still, <laughs> That's you know, his business, too. Still. Even though he gets a bad desk, it's still his place. That that's. <laughs> that's not even a desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a card table. Um, but just, that was kind of something to me that, um. There really wasn't anybody that was willing to be like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, set but that aside. You see, you see a switch in that later on with that man. Yeah, and you know, it's talking with his daughter, saying, you know, you need to do this because this is what's right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what what the consequence is. It you have to do this because right. it's right. Yeah. What does she say? Like it's always right to help people or it's never wrong to help somebody yeah or, yeah so the kid was telling at man to he was wanting to do those things yeah but he was you know, afraid of jeopardizing is, his every time i do what i think is right i wind up in trouble yeah, right, right and sometimes that's the way it is it's totally how it is for me <laughs> <laughs> totally he's uh, uh the issue i had thematic thing that I've been thinking about is Ghost at some point came to believe that she had a right to whatever she needed to heal her. Mm. And that's, it's an understandable thought, but it's actually really problematic if you start trying to figure out how people are going to live together. And there's a difference between what you may need and what you have a right to. And those aren't, you know, those aren't always the same. And I think what y'all are going to hear more and more over time is people in our society saying everybody has a right to health care. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the big socialist push is for single-payer uh, government-controlled health care. Because why? Because everybody has a right. Well, do they? Uh, not according to Scripture. Now... Certain people in the Bible are given the responsibility to share what they have and to use their gifts and talents to serve people. And who are those people? The people of God. Mm -hmm. are, we have that responsibility. So if we, if we shirk our responsibility, if we can help that woman and we don't do it because we just choose not to, we're going to answer to God for that. 
but nobody has the right to come and coerce that help out of us. And that's where the that's where the line is. Uh, Dr. Uh, both Ron Paul and Rand Paul have pointed out that when you say I have a right, <clears throat> I have a right to health care, that necessarily means you think that other people are obligated to provide you with health care, meaning doctors and nurses and support staff at the hospital and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if I have a right to health care, what, what that implies is people who can provide it must provide it. And it winds up turning healthcare providers into your slaves and servants because you have a right. And so maybe the doctor's on vacation. Well, I have a right to healthcare, so call him off vacation. Mm -hmm. And so it really becomes very problematic that way. And that's what Ghost, her whole thing was, I have a right. Well, but exercising that so-called right, you may actually kill this woman in order to be healed. Yeah. Oh, but I have a right. Yeah, well, it's like somebody who's got kidney failure and needs a transplant. Well, I have a right to that person's kidney. Yeah, so. Right. Because they only need one anyway. You only need and one. That's, that's never going to fly. Uh, so <laughs> this is a good time to point out that although you can find some modern English translations, I normally read the NASB, and you can find it at certain places talking about individual rights. But generally, that's not the language of the Bible. The language of the Bible is in terms of our obligation to keep God's commands. Now, I think that winds up implying certain rights. And I mean then, you and I are told we can't unjustly kill people, right? Mm -hmm. You shall not commit murder. And I think that the corollary to that is that the person that you would murder actually has a God-given right not to be murdered. You know, God told, told you don't kill them. So that implies they have a right to life. Yeah. And then same thing with theft. If God tells me not to steal your stuff, you actually have. the corollary is that God thinks you have a right to your stuff and mm -hmm. that I don't have a right to it. And there's a Bible verse, uh, Proverbs 6, verses 30 and 31. Ooh. I'll just paraphrase it here. It says that, if a man steals because he's hungry, everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. But he will, if he's caught, he'll still have to repay sevenfold, even if it means selling everything he has. His whole house may go to pay restitution for his theft. And so to me, that's interesting. So if somebody is stealing because they have a legitimate need, we can all feel bad about that and feel bad for them and, and maybe be willing to forgive them more easily and stuff like that. But the truth is just because I'm hungry doesn't mean I get to steal food from somebody who has it or something like well, that. Wouldn't it be better just to go <clears throat> and ask? Right, exactly. <laughs> or wouldn't it be better to seek those people out and serve them? Hey. Exactly. Well, hey. if you know. <clears throat> what yeah. was I saying? <laughs> right. So. Well, and then that's the whole thing. Then that leaves the government completely out of it, which makes a lot of modern people nervous because we think the government, if it's not involved, you know, nothing good can happen. And but Well, it just takes the pressure off of you to actually have to having to address yeah. this. <clears throat> well, we'll just call this agency and, and they can do something because that's why they're there. Right. Well, and then say, say Jordan has two sandwiches and I don't have a sandwich and I'm hungry. And Jordan Good knows luck. that I'm hungry. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> It'd be more like if you had two sandwiches. If I had two sandwiches. <laughs> and, and you were hungry. And I was hungry. And also, <laughs> and also anybody I know was hungry. And they asked me for one of my sandwiches. And I know they're hungry. <laughs> well, the government's not supposed to come to me and force me to give them one of my sandwiches. But if I don't. God is going to take that to heart, and now I'll be dealing with God in a in a bad way. Mm -hmm. And you know, another proverb says, "He who closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself cry out and not be heard." And so God records all those things, and nobody's getting away with anything, and everybody gets what their actions deserve. And so, 
uh, and it's imperative that we determine that we're going to do what God says. And so that's just what that whole incident reminded me of, where it set me down that path of thinking that did ghost have a right to what she thought she needed to be healed? Well, no, she, she may have had a right to expect that, that good and honest people would help her, mm-hmm. but she doesn't have a right to coerce anything out of anybody. Hmm. If that makes sense. Um, I thought it was kind of, uh, uh, kind of noteworthy that when the, the gang escapes from, uh, doc, what's his name? Bill Foster, Dr. Foster and, uh, the ghost and stuff that she's like, we have to hunt them down and stuff like that. And he's a lot of, we can't track them. She's all, well, he has a daughter. So, you know, we'll just get it from him that way. And he stops her and he's like, we're not doing it this way. Like, if you want to go after them, you can go after them, but I'm not going to be a part of it. And you're going to have to deal with it by yourself, you know? And I thought that was, uh, that was, yeah, that was kind of, that was interesting to see. I was happy to see it. Because, you know, I did like Lawrence Fisher. I was like, he's not that bad a guy. Come on, man. And then, you know, he actually goes and says, "This that's not acceptable. You know, yeah. I know that you've done things that are wrong in the past, and maybe you didn't have so much of a choice about it. But at this moment, you have a choice. And if you do this, then I'm not going to help you anymore. Right. Well, so Fishburne's character wasn't so much a bad guy as he was an offended guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Because the Proverbs say a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And and that was him. Hank Pym had pushed him beyond his limits. And yeah. It was apparently a real jerk. And so Dr. Foster wasn't so much a bad guy as he was. Just somebody who probably could have been treated better and would have been a, a great asset if he hadn't pushed him away. Right. Yeah, that's probably true. He didn't really come off as, like, a bad guy, even when you found out that he was, like, helping, he was helping with, yeah. He was still yeah. just like, oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's, like, trying to be, do, he's trying to do the right he, thing. Because he really did, he was really trying to help her and, 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 and to provide what she needed, and he just wasn't able to do that without, uh, like, cooperation from Hank and, more and everybody else. Technology yeah. and all of that stuff there. Right. All right, anything else y'all have? <laughs> well, you know, Carmen was talking about how everybody just kind of needed to be have some patience, and I think uh, it brings up an issue of sovereignty and who is control. Is somebody in control of these things, or do you have to go out and manhandle the situation and massage it to meet whatever you need to be done? And so um, there are some, some issues there you know who's in charge who's in control and can you trust any of these people or places or yeah exactly if if god's not in control then you better be yeah yeah that's kind of that's how most of the world is forced to live i'm mm-hmm. afraid i don't know i was thinking about it and i don't really feel like hank pym and the wasp at this moment at least are like really heroes that they're just kind of people that have the technology yeah, to do Yeah, they're things. not really, are they? They're no. just, uh, they're kind of self-interested. And they're doing Ant-Man. what they need to do Ant-Man. for them. Ant-Man, I would say, he's trying to do... is trying to be a hero. Like, he's maybe not... He's. I think he's kind of at, like, the Spider-Man level right now. At least, you know, the, <laughs> the Tom Holland Spider-Man is that they're both just sort of... They want to be that big thing, but they can't, they can't quite get there yet. I can't talk. Um, <laughs> they will after so the next event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> words are so hard. Um, so, but I was, you know, while we were talking about them, I don't think that either of them are really heroes. I don't think the wife they just is, have the tech. Yeah, maybe he yeah. was back in the past, but I don't think he is now, and I don't think the wasp right. is. That she hasn't been raised to do that. They're extraordinary people, but it takes more than that to be heroic. To be incredible, as. Elastigirl would say. <laughs> oh, boy. That's what Elastigirl would say? Yeah. Wrong franchise. Good franchise. We're mixing franchises. Yeah. That's not what we're about here at the World View Media no. Podcast. Yes. Did Sorry. we talk about unjust laws again and how this affects Ant Man? And... Uh, let's not go back over that ground. We had that pretty well with Infinity War. Well, it's still 
an incredible. It still affects. Oh it's yeah, it's still there. Yeah. yeah. So an unjust law, it's not just on the books; it's on the people. I think it. Saint Augustine said, "An unjust law is no law at all." Unless you break it, and then you find out. <laughs> right. <laughs> House well, arrest. <laughs> the fact that you can get in trouble for breaking a man's rule doesn't. It doesn't mean it is a valid law. It just means somebody has the power to enforce it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, we're ready. I guess so. Calling it. <laughs> this is it. Goodbye, Reagan. Goodbye. Three, two, one. Dominionize. Uh, <laughs> everybody's like, what? Did we say it I never, I what never know ghost, what I'm supposed to say. The Baba Yaga? <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, good nope. movie. Go watch it. Yeah. 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 Go watch it. Go watch it. Until next time, y'all. God bless you. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the Worldview Media Podcast. Please visit reconstructionistradio.com to check out the other podcasts in our network and to download our free audiobooks.